Hi, welcome to your 14-day weather forecast. When I put together last week's update, it seemed as though at this point we would be enjoying a period of quiet, settled and high-pressure dominated weather. But instead, the outcome is the second named storm of the new season, Storm Babette. So it's going to be very unsettled in the short term for sure, but how are things shaping up as we head through the next two weeks? Well, as usual, I'm going to start with the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Wednesday the 18th. And at the outset, we've got Storm Babette moving up across the UK. It's starting to bring heavy outbreaks of rain. At this point, they are focused on southern and central regions. Also, the tightly packed isobars there ahead of it indicate very strong winds. Now, as I run this, what we see is low pressure. Storm Babette stays dominant in the short term through the next few days. There's some very heavy rain at first in the northeast, and that could well last for two or three days. Flooding there, a possibility. I'll come back to that in a moment. As we go into the weekend, there's some heavy rain there showing up in the southeastern corner, perhaps moving into central parts of England with low pressure staying close by. And with winds coming in from the east, it's not going to be warm at this point. We've lost some milder air from the southwest. Continuing this through to its conclusion, what happens? Well, the low pressure views moves away, the Atlantic comes back, further heavy outbreaks of rain, and on this computer model, run a deep area of low pressure tracks across the UK early next week, bringing more very windy and wet weather. But that's a long way off, of course. Finishing here, Thursday the 26th, a westerly flow across all parts of the UK, perhaps more showery by then, with longer outbreaks of rain here being shown to be affecting just the far north. So, lots taking place as we go through the first week. Here's the jet stream and air temperature sequence to begin with. The yellows over the UK are indicating mild air. Also, the jet stream is very disorganised, a strong streak there pushing down to the south but also it's arching up there across the UK and the low pressure just sitting in between. So that's why the areas of low pressure aren't going anywhere fast. As I run this, what we see is really it's a very, very mixed pitch of jet moving there across the Atlantic, really getting its act together later on, staying just a little bit south of the UK with areas of low pressure at this point. So the first half of next week moving in across the UK. No sign of settled conditions. That's a key takeaway from both of those animations. Of course, there will be some drier periods in the mix, but lots of rain looks likely, strong wind, so the potential for disruption. Temperatures are not going to be the focus of the weather, but I'll show a few charts anyway. These are forecast maximums at 15 GMT, Thursday the 19th. It's mild or very mild at this point over most areas, 16 or 17 Celsius. Jumping forwards to Friday, it's now cooler, quite chilly there actually in Scotland as we've got that air starting to be drawn in from the east, the northeast, still milder in the southwest, but even parts of eastern England there have dipped a few Celsius. Into the weekend, perhaps the coldest day, Saturday and distinctly raw, if this is right, sevens, eights or nines in seven counties and lower as you go across the northern half of the UK. In fact, there could well be some snow falling over the Scottish mountains uh, through the first few days. As I say, that colder air is pulled in from the east or the northeast. Into the early part of next week, and temperatures are now trending upwards, 13s, 14s, 15s in central and eastern counties, still lower in the north. So, they will be fluctuating through the first week. There is the likelihood of it being particularly cold on Saturday in southern and central regions, generally lower in the northern half of the UK, though, throughout. Now, I've mentioned Storm Babette through the first two or three days. Just a couple of rain charts here to illustrate how things may well play out. The one on the left shows rain at 14 GMT on Thursday, the 19th of October. At this point, it's really focused on the eastern part of Scotland there, the orange shade in indicating very heavy rain. And with that lasting for quite a long time, flooding is expected to be a significant issue in that part of the UK. Showers further south, some heavy ones in southern England. On the right, it's 09 GMT on Friday. At this point, we've got the low pressure area centered 
close to um, eastern England. So there's some really, really heavy rain being shown there in uh, eastern and central parts of England. At this point, the details are still to be firmed up, of course, but that's also worth keeping an eye on. It could cause some disruption. But if you look up to eastern Scotland, it's still raining there, not as heavy as earlier on, but still some, uh, still potentially some heavy bursts in the mix, adding to the flooding problems in that part of the UK. Winds are also an issue, as I've indicated. The uh, chart here is 18, uh, Wednesday the 18th of October, 23 GMT. The strongest winds there in the northern half of the UK at this point, if they've been shown in Western Scotland, but I'm going to run an animation next. And the key thing is to focus on the eastern, eastern Scotland, perhaps northeastern England as well, because that's where the strongest winds are going to be through the coming days. Here we go. You can see the purple and red shading there affecting eastern Scotland. And then towards the end, the winds are strengthening close to the east coast of England as well. So very, very disruptive weather it does look likely to be affecting northeastern Britain through the first few days. A combination of the heavy rain and strong winds. But even other areas are likely to see quite a lot of wet weather as well. So very, very nasty for the first few days. Now, in more general terms, here are the rain totals for days 0 to 5, the aggregate ones. ECM on the left, GFS on the right. The wettest conditions unusually are being shown in the eastern half of Britain. That really fits in with the pattern which I've, uh, which the animation showed with low pressure moving up from the southwest and then out to the east of the UK and winds coming in from an easterly or northeasterly direction rather than a west or southwesterly, at least for a time through the first few days. Some very, very high totals being shown there in eastern Scotland. And as I say, that's where the uh, UK Met, Os Met Office have their warnings out for the greatest risk of flooding in the short term. But also look down to the southeast, it's a wet picture there. Moving forwards to the 10 day charts, totals have continued to increase everywhere. Somewhat unusually, the driest conditions, it's all relative are being shown in Western Scotland. So the rain distribution through the first 10 days of the forecast period is sort of reversed to the normal with the highest values in the east rather than the west. And there is good model support for that to be the case. So it is, it is quite an unusual rainfall distribution, hence the elevated risk of flooding flooding in some areas which normally would tend to escape the worst of the weather at this time of the year. So how do the deterministic models compare with each other towards the end of the first week as a good support for that unsettled theme or not? Here is the GFS at, on Wednesday the 25th of October. This stage of low pressure is close to the UK but there is more of a westerly flow returning, so we've lost the easterly, but it's unsettled. As is the Canadian model, low pressure air centre to the northwest. The German icon, perhaps somewhat milder or even warmer in the southeast, more of a southwesterly flow returning here, but the general theme is an unsettled one. The ECM also indicating showers or longer spells of rain with areas of low pressure close to the UK. And finally, the UK Met Office, it looks very consistent there as well with low pressure bringing showers or longer periods of wet weather. Quite an unsettled or even a very unsettled picture being painted by the deterministic models towards the end of the first week. Good agreement on the general theme. Of course, the details are varying. At this point, temperatures probably quite close to the average cooler relative to it in the north, but rain or showers at least affecting all areas. Do things change significantly as we head through the second week? Well, it's all about trends and probabilities, of course, as I always say at this range, just the general direction of travel, most certainly not the details. Here is the ensemble data from the GEFS model for London. Across the top, air temperatures, well, the thick purple line, the ensemble mean is 
quite close to the thick black line, the 30 year average. Throughout the second week, if anything, it's trending below it later on. So there is a signal for temperatures at this level, so about 1500 meters above our heads, to be dipping later on through the second week. Rainfall along the bottom, quite a lot of spikes. Well, lots of spikes actually through the first few days, showing a wet picture. Later on though, their number perhaps starts to decrease a chance, at least a growing chance of some drier periods into the mix. Two meter temperatures for London. The trend is downward, so it's fitting in really with the air temperatures that I've just shown. Lots of yellow and, lits, and a significant amount of orange to begin with, the, that's 16 to 20 maximums. The yellow is 11 to 15s. Later on, the amount of light green starts to increase. Those are runs going for between six and 10 Celsius. Still lots of yellow in there as well. But the trend is gently downwards, especially through the second half of the second week. Up to Manchester, the air temperature profile is quite similar. It's dipping below the average later on. The risk of rain, well, it's high to start off with, but again, there's just an a weak indication, I think, for it to be turning somewhat drier towards the end of the second week. Two metre temperature data table for Manchester. It follows a similar trend to the London one, perhaps more marked. It's clearer here, I think. It's downward, so more cooler runs later on, suggesting that temperatures will be edging downwards. Up to Glasgow, very, very similar across the top here. Although the anomaly later on is more is bigger than it was on the Manchester and London charts, the thick purple line falling further below the thick black line than it did on the other two. That's the ensemble mean dipping down below that 30 year average. It's a wet story though, quite a lot of rain spikes continuing to appear throughout. There is just again some suggestions there at the very end that the chance of drier periods may be starting to increase. But I think plenty of rain through the second week. The two meter temperature data table follows a similar trend. It's indicating downwards, so becoming cooler later on. Even a little bit of dark green showing up there. Those are runs going for maximums between one and five Celsius, but they are in a minority. Most are in the light green six to 10 buckets. Frost watch, because of course at this time of year the risk of frost is increasing quite rapidly. I've picked Nottingham as the central location again, just to because it's fairly indicative of the bigger picture. Lots of light green overnight lows, so between six and ten. No risk of frost if those are correct, but the important thing to look at is the amount of dark green runs going for maximums between one and five Celsius. It increases, so those indicate at least a chance of ground frost forming because for ground frost, the air temperature doesn't need to be at or below freezing point. It can be several degrees above it. Just at the very end there, a little bit of blue showing up, which is pointing towards temperatures dipping below freezing point in one or two runs. Those would lead to an air frost, of course. So the risk of frost, at least on the ground, does start to increase later on through the second week. Rainfall using the ECM ensemble data, days eight, nine, and 10 here. By this point, the indication is that the greatest chance of five millimeters or more of rain falling will be in the west. So reverting to a more classical pattern, the wettest conditions, in western parts of the UK with the weather coming in from the Atlantic rather than from the east. Having said that, it's quite a wet picture in all areas if this is correct, so still very much low pressure dominated I would think through days 8, 9 and 10. Days 11, 12 and 13, the chance of 5 millimetres or more of rain falling is beginning to reduce. The oranges are now being replaced by yellows in the west, so maybe dropping from 70% chance to 40, 50, 60. And in the east, there is some a lighter shading. So at the very end there, the last two charts perhaps showing a 20 to 30% chance of five millimeters or more rain falling in central and eastern parts of England. So a reversion here to a more typical pattern, but still all in all through much of the second week, quite a wet one. The GEFS mean surface level pressure plot for Saturday the 28th of October, 
still low pressure dominated here. It has low pressure really just maybe sitting closer to the UK than normal. Generally it would tend to be located a little bit closer to Iceland. That's all and that's adding to the likelihood of it still being wet at this point. If anything, maybe drier there in the southeast. As I say, that ties in with the ECM ensemble data showing the wettest conditions becoming focused on the west once more. The mean surface level pressure data table for York. Well, low pressure, very dominant through the first few days. A significant amount of purple. Those are runs going for uh, less than 981 millibars. Very deep areas of low pressure coming into play, but lots of blue as well. But as we head towards the end of the second week, the amount of yellow and green increases. Those are runs going for well, at least some of the yellow ones above the average for the time of the year, which is around 1014 millibars. But all in all, it's a mixed picture. It's a weak signal there for, for pressure to start rising towards the end of October, maybe into the early part of November. But as we've seen during the last week or so, even ensemble data like this is very fallible at these longer ranges. So take this with a pinch of salt, but perhaps the sting will be starting to come out of the unsettled weather towards the end of October. So to summarize, week one, Storm the Bet is going to be bringing very wet and windy weather to much of the UK through the first few days. The rain distribution is a little bit unusual because the highest totals are expected to be in the eastern part of the UK rather than the west, which is typical. Flooding, therefore, is going to be an issue in places. The worst conditions look like being in eastern Scotland. Temperatures fluctuate quite mild to begin with, then colder for a time as an east or north easterly feed is drawn in. But Towards the end of the first week, westerly or southwesterly winds return and those temperatures should be rising once more. But with the return of a west or southwesterlies, it is going to be staying unsettled. Week two, unsettled with wet and possibly windy periods, particularly through the first few days. But there is a signal for it to start turning a little bit drier later on and also potentially somewhat colder. So, there we have it, some really, really nasty autumn weather on the way, especially through the first few days with Storm the Bet. Just the weak signal there, perhaps, for it to start turning a little bit quieter as we head through the second week. But that's an awfully long way off. Don't rely on it at this stage. It's just what the current guidance is pointing towards. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As ever, if you did, then I'd really appreciate it if you could hit the like button below. Also, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Remember as well that you can stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.